What's up, fool? What's up, fool? Podcast. What's up, fool? Podcast with Felipe Esparza and Rodrigo Torres. Yeah, man. And Lisa Esparza. Hello. And our super special guest, Joey Coco Diaz. What's up, fool? What's up, baby? Right here, man. Under the fucking canopy here. I didn't know. even know we had a canopy. <laughs> a fucking Burbank ready to go. We got lighting. Rodrigo for his not shining today. Down the block from the Italian restaurant that got no customers. <laughs> oh my God, you know, they had one customer there. We had Yorsi Tarmer as a guest, and he cut off the bus right there and bought a sandwich and ate over here. How was it? He said it was all right. He said it was good. It looked pretty oily. Yeah, so like oily's out. good. We were talking about that last week. Oily on a sandwich? What type of sandwich? It was like Italian meatball. Okay, it's got to have a little grease to it. You know what I'm saying? It'll be weird grease. if it was dry, huh? <laughs> Super dry. Like those Subway meatballs, those fucking things. They're drier than fucking de de desert meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I never eat one of those. I just know from looking at them that you're gonna fucking die. I've had the um, all that frozen shit. I've had the um, the fake imitation crab when I was trying to go, you know, that way. Pescatarian. Yeah, but it was all right. It was not the best. That's imitation somewhere? crab sucks. The imitation crab is just fish. It's white fish that's made into they, crab. They spray paint purple yeah. at the end of it and shit. It's real fish though. It looks plastic. It's like <laughs> How do the games would taste so bad? I don't know. They add what they... I don't know. What's up, fool? How's your Netflix special going? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> They're degenerates. Wait there, I call Netflix every day and ask tabs. I got better things. They don't even give you tabs. <laughs> they don't give no, tabs. Nobody gives you Now they're starting to release numbers on, you know, how many watch Bird Box, how many watch Roma, but they were pretty quiet for years. You know what? it's so weird how you don't care. You don't really give a fuck. <laughs> like I've been here twenty years. I don't give a fuck. What's in the difference? What's it? You know, you 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 work hard. You do it and you put it out. And it's me and Rodrigo just talking about the outside expe expectations. People expect all this shit. You just can do the best you could do. You know, once you start getting into numbers and you had, you ever have those people that tell you, bro, I saw so many tickets. I even sell a lot of booze when I do, t you know, like those people. Remember those people? The red alcohol. I got the red, I got the package for alcohol. I don't even worry about that shit. Uh, all I'm trying to do is go up there and do the best 15 minutes I got and not get off the stage. I don't want to sell T-shirts. I don't want to do nothing. I'll take some pictures. I talk to them. But all that shit just throws my game off. So if you start thinking about, like when people, put, I, I love people who, I'm going to start a podcast because I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan, or I'm going to make a ton of money, and your podcast fails because you have well, the like wrong motivation. Well, like Eddie, I'm going to be the next yeah, Howard Stern. You have the wrong <laughs> motivations. Just start a podcast. <laughs> Just say to yourself, I'm going to do a podcast for a year. But we all think of plan B. You know, yeah. Like, how many numbers am I doing? What number did you get up to? Well, I don't know what number my podcast is. If you think I have time to check iTunes every day, you're out of your fucking mind. You do the best work you can, you put it out there, and you let it fall into God's hands. After that, there's nothing you can do. You ever go to an audition December 18th, and you gotta wait for two fucking weeks over the holidays to see if you got that? I went through five or six of those. Big movies and shit that they make you wait, and they tell you no. And you're like, I wait, and then the movie sucks. And you're like, what <laughs> the fuck? What was the difference? It wasn't meant to be. So once I walk out of the audition now, it's over. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't give a fuck. Sometimes they call you, sometimes they call you three weeks later. It's too, we have too much on our plate to worry about. I know that when I, when I, when I hear like so people write about a certain comedian, and this is not the comedian saying because he don't know numbers either, but somebody just decides to write. It was the highest rated show on Comedy Central. Who said, who told you? Comedy Central tells you, yeah, but Comedy yeah. Central, Central tells everybody the same shit <laughs> to blow smoke up your ass. They tell you all the same shit. It's like Barry calling all of his clients undeniable, and then they believe it. Undeniable. <laughs> but I was undeniable. That's their job. You're undeniable. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Rodrigo? Chilling, bro, right here, live, dude, like a fly on the wall. What's cracking, big dog? over there, bro. You going surfing or what? <laughs> no, I'm just fucking long sleeve. Little baby Ricky Steamboat. Uh -huh. You got perfume on? Nah. <laughs> no, it's we just uh, it's Fraser Smith hair hair hair, hair gel. <laughs> no, I I don't I can't smell. I can't well, I smell, smell shit. It, <laughs> I just said I thought that's what you said to him. Something about perfume. Or it was like shit. Febreze perfume or some shit. Just he think said, are you going surfing? The rest of the country's freezing right now. Oh my God, bro, we beat death. Hell yeah, we got turquoise twenty over but here. Thanks to Lisa. <laughs> what made you decide to leave? 
Blues Clues right here. What? <laughs> what, made you decide, what made you decide to leave? Oh, they, man. Lisa. Did the club say it to you? Lee, Lee, you the, Lee, first, the Lisa. Owner. It was the owner first. So. First, the owner <laughs> said, man, listen, man. At first, he was like oh, optimistic. Yeah, man. You know, man, we're a snow city. We're going to take care of the snow. But then by Saturday night, he said, listen, man, if you have to no, leave. Friday night, he was Friday there. night, he said, if you want to leave, I will take it personal. It's going to be a good one. My wife went to the supermarket. <clears throat> she said everything was gone. All the shelves were empty. But then I started looking for backup flights, and I booked them on a couple backup flights, and they got canceled right away. And I was like, fuck, we got to hurry up and get them out of there. So we had to cancel Saturday's shows because the, only, the latest flights out were 6 p.m. So he's not going to be able to do any shows and leave Saturday night. So we got to have them leave Saturday, Saturday morning. And I'm glad they did because like starting at like noon, 1 o'clock, they started canceling they everything. Com yeah. Come down. And it was well, let me down tell you hard. something. I was in New York on Thursday. <laughs> I was supposed to shoot a show Friday and leave Saturday morning. And you know me, dog. I already had in my mind that I wasn't going to LAX till March 7th. <laughs> <laughs> like I take, plan I take breaks from LAX. So I'll do a whole four or five weeks out of Burbank and two local. <laughs> That's the main thing, is giving LAX a fucking breather sometimes. And I got this call to do this fucking show on Viceland, so they said, you come back to New York, you shoot. And I plan on staying there for the weekend. I said, let me do the show, and then I just stay, stay Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I looked at the dates, and I'm like, I grew up there. Only a fucking moron would fucking <coughs> go back there at this time of the year. Like, only a fucking idiot goes back at this time of the year. Next time before you go back east, just call me. No, we weren't going to accept it, and it was the only date they were giving us. Well, yeah, then just say no. Then just say no. We can't do us January. We don't do January and nowhere like that. Nowhere like that. We were in Bridgeport the week before. Bridgeport the week before. I don't mind, no. The first two weeks are okay. See, it's the first two weeks that are okay, the last two weeks of January, and all of February. Yeah, the closer you get I avoid the East Coast. Just yeah, avoid it. Just avoid it. Just avoid it. There's no reason to go there. Because the East Coast is a different mentality. Number one, it dies after the first. And it doesn't pick up till Valentine's Day. The East Coast and California have different mentalities. That's number one. Even in those towns, there's, there's a lot to do, but there's not. It's cold. So, yeah, if you want to make good money, Buffalo and those places are good, like the second week of January. The th third and fourth week of January, you don't want to be in the East Coast. Why? I'll tell you why. When I was a kid, there was a park called Hudson County Park, and there was an island in the middle. In the summertime, you were able to paddle boat, and there was an <laughs> island in the middle. Well, on the third week of January, since I was a kid, it was called the Island of Insanity Party. <laughs> and they would wait for that river to freeze, and they would push kegs over. Think about that. Pushing kegs over this river. And we'd go into the middle of the island with the quaaludes, and we'd drink, and it would be called the Island of Insanity Party. Whatever time you stayed there, you stayed there, too. So when I got the call to go do that show, I was like, fuck the Farmer's Almanac. I don't look at that shit, and I don't look at the fucking weather. Farmer's Almanac. Yeah, that tells you what it's going to be like the next year, and I don't look at the weather. I don't believe the weather. The weather is a, hi uh, a hypothesis. It's just an educated guess. That's all the weather is. Anybody could be a fucking weatherman. Look at the weather in California on Monday, and I'll tell you what the weather in New York is going to be on Saturday. It's the same shit. It's fucking, it just goes across the country. And sometimes it gets knocked out by wind and shit. Two, but one day, 24-hour shit. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter. It's still the second coldest week. You know, I heard Monday was so fucking cold in the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. I heard it was so fucking cold. So I shot right away. I told, talked to the agents, and they're like, well, we can book you. We got a week for you. You could go right from the show on Viceland to the weekend. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to my motherfucking guns. Because I know better than to go fuck with these people back there on this time of the year. I, I, got, I got in at 2. I made reservations with Ari to go to Peter Luger's Steakhouse. Nice fucking steak. I see the picture. Oh, my God. They chopped it up nice for you. We went over there like gentlemen. The one in three Brooklyn? Yeah, the one. Because that's where I was staying, right in Williamsburg. So it was only seven minutes away from the hotel. So we went over there at 345. I don't eat meat after six at night. I'm too old. My own. Yeah, you got to eat meat before six when you're <laughs> old, man. And I fucking, we split a steak. We split an order of fries, and we split the salad. I smoked the number. They got me a balcony. I smoked the number on the balcony, and I stayed and watched Narcos Mexico. <laughs> the next morning, my call time was at 10. That's like living like a doctor. I got up at 8. I had some eggs. You know what time I got back to my room? 12.45. I 
So I had plenty of weed for the weekend to hold me over. I go, you know what? I'll sit in my room. I'll watch some movies. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. It's, I don't want to take a chance. I called JetBlue. I had a mid ticket. So I called JetBlue. And before I said anything, JetBlue was answering the phone. Hi, we're uh, waiving uh, rebook fees because of the snowstorm. I, I went online. I said, you got a mint ticket in the aisle? They said, yeah, it's 744. I said, book pop on that motherfucker. <laughs> I got on, to, I, the car picked me up at uh, 5. It Friday? Yeah, Friday. I had the car pick me up at 4. I had to take me to the fucking yeah, Kennedy Airport, all that TSA and all that shit. They're just scaring white people. I had <laughs> I had the express ticket. I was the first one in line. <laughs> They're just scaring white people. That's all, yeah. that's all ABC does. World News Tonight, they just scare <laughs> white people. TSA is intact. Everybody was there. Hell yeah, that was I, I walked right through TSA. I had an hour and a half to kill. I went into the Palms. You know me, dog, like a gentleman. <sighs> I had the eight ounce fucking sirloin, the, the mashed potatoes. Another steak for breakfast? Fu no, it was about se 7 o'clock. It was oh. 5 o'clock. Oh, at night. Oh. 5 o'clock. <laughs> when you're in New York, you gotta eat the steaks. I had another <laughs> little steak and Palms of Kennedy. I walked upstairs at fucking 7. I was the first one on the plane. And I was back in fucking LAX at 10.40. It was 40 minutes early. And it was 20 minutes late leaving. That's just to tell you, it's all bullshit. They tack an hour on just to scare white people. <laughs> I was on the 405 by fucking 11 o'clock. Like a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> After November 10th, I do not go to the East Coast. And I don't go back till either the second week of January or sometime in March. I avoid it like the plague. It's good money, but you you got a good chance of getting stuck in an airport for nine or ten hours. And again, I come prepared. I got Xanax in the bag. I got a vapor pen. I got an iPhone. I got the fucking charger. I got the <laughs> iPad. The charger. I got the stars of death. I got this. No, no more stars. No more stars. They it's got rid a, of them, bro. Yeah, they got. They went out of business. They fell on their own. They, they fell, but they got some new shit out now. See, my my sis, my my niece is 22, but she's got a 40-year-old boyfriend who's a chemist. And he's been coming out here to do interviews. And he was telling me that, that what they're about to do with reefer is phenomenal. Like the liquids, the vapors, the edibles. So the other day, some guy turned me on to these new edibles. 98% THC made with oxygen. They blend it. Mm. It comes in a capsule. When I woke up this morning, I didn't know where I was. You took I, it last night? I took three of them before my daughter's Muay Thai karate <laughs> class. And I, and I blacked out. I don't know what happened. I remember going to Muay Thai. I, I don't even know what I ate for dinner last night. I was fucked up. I don't know what time I went to bed. I don't know nothing. All I know is I woke up this morning and I had to go back to bed. I went outside, <laughs> looked at the girls, and I went back to bed. I felt her kissing me before school. She gave me a kiss, and I went out there and gave another kiss. And I, I missed kickboxing and everything. I was stoned this morning, Jack, when I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Man, <laughs> when we That's left, it. it was me and Rodrigo we in the full charge. Matt, full charge. Yeah, we were out there with Matt. We were out there, and... Um, I, I was gone. Like, I, I didn't say goodbye to you, but I was gone. For, when I got on my plane, they upgraded me to first class. Last oh, time. hell yeah. So I was, you know, I, I, I was passing out. Then they moved me to first class. I passed out right away immediately. I ate like three edibles. Passed out. But when we were flying into Detroit, I got scared. Because it was all white. It was like the beginning of that movie Fargo. Like nothing but white. In the air? In the, the floor. On the floor. And I said, oh, shit. Then they said, oh, the pilot was safe. We couldn't fly no more. So we waited and set a tarmac for another new pilot, a good one. A good one. She came in, bro, and they were Nancy. Everybody knew her last name. She, <laughs> oh, you, could, you connected from Detroit to Rochester? No, from, from Rochester to Detroit to L.A. Okay, yes, yeah, so you connected to yeah. uh, Detroit. But I made it home too, bro. Yeah, but everything you were supposed to connect to Chicago, they canceled all the Chicago connections. Yeah, you don't flights. want to go to yeah. Chicago because they were having the same problem. They can't slip and they can't stop <laughs> the planes. There. And then, but then they, um, when that's why I had to put you guys on separate flights because I uh, went to Atlanta. There was one seat left on the flight I got you on. 
and then no more. It was sold out immediately. And then I had him go down to Atlanta because there was a similar departure time. But anything after 9 o'clock, I was afraid you guys were getting stuck in Rochester. How long was your flight from Atlanta to LA? <laughs> uh, it was probably about four hours. Yeah, first like class, the, the upgrade Yeah. yeah. I got I got first first class on that part. So you passed out. I like passed out though. I was fucking tired. I didn't even sleep the night before. Yeah, they upgraded both of you guys. So you guys flew in. There's an airport in Rochester. Yeah, a little one. A little tiny one. I think JetBlue goes there too. Yeah, JetBlue and Spirit. You don't <laughs> want to get on Spirit. <laughs> Hell no. You don't ever want to go on. Spirit. They let you fly that plane. You get there early. Yeah, that's a mistake. That's a big <laughs> fucking mistake. I got a plan, man. When I go on the road, I don't want no drama. I don't want no drama. Somebody's saying that, people are saying the audio volume is low. So I just fucking make it as easy as possible for myself. <laughs> no spirit. I avoid Chicago. No frontier. Before I fucking have agreed to the date, I look to see, make sure there's a plane ticket back early so there's no misunderstanding on Sunday. I can get back by 11 or 10, the Lord's Day. <laughs> I got fucking parameters, dog. <laughs> if not, I'll stay home. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, the older you get, the more you got to put your foot down and say no. <laughs> I knew in 1998 I was never working Sundays again. <laughs> like, I started in 98 telling people Sundays are not happening. You know how many times I left Rogan on the road on a Sunday? <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> Ask him. And that was before and you I, had a kid. I don't work Sundays. And I would tell him, someday you're going to have kids. And soon enough, he stopped working Sunday. <laughs> I have a dog. I don't feel like working Sundays. No, you gotta eat dinner with your wife on Sundays. You gotta, even if you don't have a family, you gotta have a family. You know, I like. I I used to hate waking up in a hotel room on a Sunday morning, and there being football on, and me fucking waiting for a seven o'clock show to open up for some fucking jack off. Stuff like Toby Hicks. You know, <laughs> I just don't like it. I just never liked it. I remember in 2009, <laughs> I was in a quick comedy before the podcast boom started. And I got a call from the Funny Bone, and they offered me like seven weeks of work. It was shit money. And I go, and they were like Wednesday through Sunday, and I go, knock that down, because I'm not working Sundays. And they said, well, then you can't work here. And I said, fine. They hung up the phone, they called back an hour later, and they said, we'll cut something out with you to work Sundays. And I was like, I don't want to work Wednesdays either. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew back then already what my parameters were and what I wanted to do and what, you know when Cotton, when Philippe and I started touring it was Tuesday through Sunday yeah the Paso by Friday you want to put a gun in your fucking mouth by Saturday <laughs> and the improvs used to do three shows on Saturday Yeah. so by Saturday 10 o'clock you want to put a gun <laughs> in your fucking mouth <laughs> you don't want to hear your jokes you don't want to hear a joke then you gotta stay there all fucking day on Sunday and do fucking Sunday at seven for a bunch of, who goes to a show on a Sunday night? I don't even wanna talk to those people in real life. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Who goes to a show on Sunday night? So I don't, I, I don't want no part of it. Thursday night's my night. When I was snorting coke, <laughs> Thursday night's when professionals go out. Thursday night's and Sunday night's. So Sunday night you're in a comedy club, you're a fucking punk. You should be out eating somebody's ass after church and getting drunk really? right from church, right to the fucking bar. That's how we did it in the old days. So Sundays, I don't want to see you at a comedy club, but Thursday's a great night for comedy. Thursday, I would meet the main dope dealer. Yeah, Thursday. I love Thursday night. They always show up on Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's comedy. Wednesday, stay home and watch fucking Bachelor. Military free night. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not in the mood for Wednesdays either. You know, But I, I knew this in 98 <laughs> that I didn't want to work Sundays. And then I stopped. I just said, I'm done working Sundays. And people used to get pissed at me. Dog, you got, I ain't working Sunday. I don't give a fuck. If it is a holiday on a Monday, then I work local, like I did this week. I did three shows Sunday at the comedy store. I did the two main room shows and whatever. But no, I don't want to work Sundays on the road. That's family day. Too many families have been broken up over, <laughs> over a stupid 7 o'clock fucking show. <laughs> stupid 7 o'clock show. A stupid uh, 7 o'clock show. I want to sit across. And this is when I was just dating her. We weren't even married. I decided. I'm like, she deserves better. <laughs> Sunday nights, we have dinner at 6, like a fucking family. Even if the cats sit next to us and we throw <laughs> shrimp at them and shit. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. I don't give a fuck what you got to offer, what your offer is. It really doesn't matter to me. I want peace of mind. You so know. you take the first flight out or you leave the same night? I take, if I could leave, 
the same night out, I would. Yeah, you can't always, because East you Coast can't. to West Coast, no, you can't get you a can't. late flight. There's no more 1 o'clock yeah, flights, and most airports close at 1, yeah. and, and, and you have to be at an hour. Get stuck in Vegas. Yeah. Like, you ever do a college in Vegas at 7, <laughs> and you get off the stage at 8, you can't fly out, because the last flight's at 9.45. You get stuck in Vegas, too. You can't leave Vegas, too. You can't leave none of these places no more like the old days. But an 8 o'clock show, if I get out of there at 9.30, take a few pictures in the flames at midnight, I'll get the fuck out of there. I get the fuck out the first flight out. First flight out, I'm out of there. Once you hand me that check, all bets are off. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't even know what you're talking about. If you keep talking, you're just talking to a wall. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Because all I'm thinking about is going home to my daughter. I don't I know what you... I love the people. That, yeah, next time you come, we'll, we'll do, do dinner. This, we'll barbecue. Yeah, 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 sure, right. Good, Paris yeah, yeah. Keep talking. Because <laughs> I'm not even... I don't even give a fuck. All I'm thinking about is going home to my daughter. I don't know what you're talking about. With a barbecue. Yeah, I have no idea. Next time you can... Yeah, sure. And I, I, I tell them, I yes him with that. <laughs> you know me. I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Yeah, sure, right. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I want this chitter chatter, you know. <laughs> the fuck out of my face. When I travel, I don't do podcasts. People get livid at me. I don't do podcasts on the road. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah, people feel like they own you. No. No podcast on the road. Something, uh, I, I don't know what I'm getting what myself of, into. I will kind of podcast bear trap, bro. Yeah, I don't know what you're getting yourself into. I walked into a room and the owner took off and they still left sitting down and Mike showed up. <laughs> right there, right, at the In the Rochester. Rochester. Comedy at the Carlson. <laughs> I don't do comedy club podcast either. Those are the ones I stay away from the most. It's like an ambush as podcast. Soon as, they, as soon as they, <laughs> bro, the funny thing is, as soon as I get the thing, that's his radio and like what podcast like <coughs> you're doing a local podcast I call the guy up and I say I'm not doing a podcast and there's they, a hottest podcast in town then they call back and they'll go well they want you to do the podcast I said well tell me tell them to find me a week when I don't have to do the podcast and there's silence how about they, how about they show up to the show <coughs> sometimes I get people that get like that Lisa how they, they go well, we want to interview him at the show why Why no. at the show no you can't promote it no more it's no. done the it's show's already here there's no show there's no you can't promote, promote the show there's nothing yeah I'm about to deny a photo press request because they want to do a review and then put photos on nah, it's nah, like nah, it's nah. not even promoting the show we oh, they want free that. tickets I know they just want free tickets to see the show no 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 no, no. I looked at their online zine and it ain't happening <laughs> I haven't heard that since the <laughs> 90s it ain't a zine <laughs> yes. I, just, I use that word for when I go purpose. into a town I go to do stand up <laughs> that's it no, I did my video. comedy podcast in Los Angeles takes up too much time of your day no it's always a by the way that too. by the way we have a comedy class by the way, that's the problem. There's a by the way. If somebody calls me and says, let's do a podcast, <coughs> it's t two minutes from the studio, you can walk there, and we'll do it at whatever time. I might consider it, depending on how I'm feeling. But once I got into, get into a stranger's car, you're done, because you don't know. It could be 40 minutes one way, 40 minutes the other. The guy's late. Then they want to stop by your uncle's house because the <laughs> uncle's a fan of the Rogan podcast and he wants to take a picture. No. Yeah, the that is the truth. <laughs> Let us no. know. Joe Dia, let's just stop by my friend's dojo. They are kids. They know about Joy Karate. Yeah, no. They don't take a photo. No. They're big fans of Batman do by the Dumpster. I don't want to do nothing. I want to smoke pot and watch Narcos. Me too, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. When I'm I, on the road. I got kidnapped one time. It was the last time. I, I, went, with the, I went with the owner of the... The com the underground comedy club in Reno, Reno Lake. Tower. Oh my God, uh, Wayne. Wayne, yeah, is he still open? He's still open. Is the club still open? He's yeah. still he open. Great guy, great guy. But the radio is too much of a wear out. Yeah, and then yeah, I told him after to, radio, he took, he took me. He took me to go buy all the alcohol with him at the for the club. <laughs> yeah, he supplies the alcohol. So Grab that bottle, for, 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 Cutty uh, Shark, uh, Felipe. I said, my the back profit. hurts. And then he tried to convince me to go uh, pass out tickets at the mall. Check and let's say that I ain't going to the mall, man. I'm going to fall asleep. That's where the kids are. Do you I'm remember going to sleep. when we used to do those ghetto gigs? Oh, my God. And they would make us go to the mall. I always say, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going no more to pass out fucking <laughs> Ain't no energy. <laughs> ain't no energy. <laughs> remember those Saturday, those special promoters oh, we get in the, San Jose? We will get there the, 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 the night before real late. 
and then they'll, they'll take they, they, they want to take us to a club. I don't want to go to no fucking mm, club. Fucking club. Those, those, those promotions never fucking work. No. We got Joe Diaz right here, and then yeah. like everybody stops singing. We're the only ones that not dressed in club attire. Right. We look like we're there to mug the place. <laughs> Yay. And you hear like four yays. <laughs> standing outside your It's sad. It's sad, <laughs> it's sad man. Four I come years. here to snort coke and get my dick sucked. <laughs> and you want to interrupt my fucking verbiage because you want to bring some fat fuck on stage and let it get the fuck out of here. Give me some joy. Don't do malls. We don't do malls. We don't do. Bro, one time the guy from San Jose <laughs> called me and he sent me a plane ticket. <laughs> so I knew there was a by the way. So I get up there, he picks me up, some Spanish kid. He picks me up, and we actually have to. He goes, We got to go to the mall first and pick up my girlfriend. What? He did, yeah, we got to go pick up my girlfriend. Now, that's, that's, that's rule number one. Now, you really want to piss me off? Make me walk. <laughs> when I got to walk, that's when it gets ugly. Like one time at Laugh Boston, I got there at 7 in the morning. They go, the elevator's broken. We're going to have to walk up the six flights of steps. And I said, cancel it. The guy just looked at me. Like, what are you talking about? I ain't walking those six flights of steps at 7 in the morning, though. I'm over 50. I'm in the heart attack zone. After 5, 30, and 12, I'm not supposed to get anxiety. So you better call that motherfucker and tell him I ain't walking upstairs. Oh my God! I would have said no too. No, fuck you. I'm not supposed to get Six it. Six flights of stairs. The fucking power went out. They want to do candlelight radio. Get the fuck Whoa. out of here. Candlelight radio. I'm done. Candelabria. Like people have no idea that we're done. Like it's been 20 years in LA. We've heard every story. <laughs> every We've excuse. We've worked to every promoter. Every you know, let me holler at you. <laughs> Those are the Work best. After a show, let me holler at you. You know, it went from 800 to 650. What about the promoter that fucking they knocked on my door at 4 in the morning? The cops were looking for him because he ran it on the radio. The radio station knocked on my door at 4 in the morning to fucking uh, tell me, what about that club in Iowa where the, they all snuck coke, the Mexican restaurant? It's a capital of speed. You, you tried to get me to do that gig, but I never did it. But yeah. they, they, all got, they all went to jail and got shut down. You, you call me up from his from his living room one day and goes, Felipe, so this guy out here in Iowa, he pays, he pays cash. He's a big fat. I'm right here with him. Talk, and you put him on the phone. He fucking pays you at the airport. But what he didn't tell me was that he owned a Mexican Coke bar in the middle of the town. I mean, that's what it was. It was like being in the 80s, the Studio 54. Is that where Brent dropped you off? No, he, he you did that gig and they went to Whitey's. Yeah, because Whitey's, where he, he dropped you off at a pool hall or something. No, shit. that was that other piece Whitey's of shit. Whitey's is a pool hall. Yeah, it's, it's a, a pool hall. Oh my God, man. Oh my God. That was, that was when you do, uh, that was when you do that. Riddles? No. Penguin, no. Penguins. Penguins? Is that the same Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. That's I a canceled shit. that shit. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, right. I think it was because of snow, right? Was yeah. That coming down? They have, <laughs> is that still open? No, that man. Years no, ago. Toledo, right? No, Ping, no, no. No, 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 like Iowa. 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 Yeah, Iowa. You do Cancel Thursday it. at one yeah. Penguins, Friday at the other, uh-huh. and then Saturday you, you do go polar bears at night. You got to go on a <laughs> boat. A it's boat? A sh- it's a ship where they do gambling. Oh, my God. And they have a little comedy club there. Oh, my God. Wednesday night is the fucking bowling alley. But this was a different gig. This was a Saturday night gig that you only have two flights to go in there. <laughs> only two flights, like two in the afternoon and something else. So that Saturday, I let for fly. As soon as I get in the truck, guy puts the money in my hand. And he goes to me, I'll have that other thing for you by the time we get to the club. And I go, what other thing? And he goes, I got you a little present. I go, listen, I don't do that no more. I just smoke pot. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. Then I'll get you some pot. I, go, I brought some. Don't worry about it. I go to the room. I smoke some pot. I take a shower. I eat some food. He picks me up like he says he is. Eight o'clock, we go down. That place is packed. The parents are there. The fucking food was off the chain. <coughs> Great comedy show. Boom, it ends. Once the parents leave, you should have seen what happened at this place. It went from a fucking nice family restaurant. It looks like a hot. It looks like dust to dawn. Dog. Everybody was, was coked up. And then we did the second show. Fuck. And everybody was coked up. There was 11 people in the audience, but there was 90 people in the joint. All of them were standing by the bathroom talking with little cups of booze. They were all going in the bathroom to do bumps. The show finishes. The promoter is fucked up. 
I look at him and I go, no, you're not. And he goes, I'm going to be fine. He's fucking, <laughs> he's fucking jawing. Shit's coming out of his nose. I go, bro, take me back to the fucking hotel room. I go, listen, you got to pick me up at five. Because there's only one flight out of here. Fuck. And it connects to Chicago. And then from Chicago, you have to connect. If you don't get me on that flight at six, I got to wait till eight o'clock at night and I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> and he promised me left and right, I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here. Five o'clock, he ain't there. Five fifteen, he ain't there. I, gotta, I called his mother's house. I woke the father up. I woke up. I don't give a fuck. They found him. This kid came to pick me up. Jizzled out of his mind. And it's the, the crank capital of the country. It's the capital of crank. Like when you see people from with that license plate from that county. People ask you, do you have meth? That's how popular it is for meth. So I think after the coke, they start doing the meth. Bro, that did not. That guy did not, 100 all the way to the airport. I didn't even say goodbye to him. I just jumped out of the truck. I, did, yeah. <laughs> I barely fucking it made rolled. it. <laughs> I barely made it. He hits me up once a year. Hey, when are you coming back? Go fuck yourself. You know, put me through that fucking nightmare. Dog, I was, it was like I was a kid. It was like 1980, going to a party in 1980. How did this guy hear of you? Through somebody, through one of these fucking Latin comics. He was doing like a Latin comic series once a month. <laughs> and he just called out of the blue one day. And he's like, I want to use you, you know. It must have been packed that first show, huh? The first show was packed, and the second show was packed, Felipe, but the second show was packed because of the cocaine. Yeah. yeah. They were just waiting outside the bathroom. I did one of those gigs, but with a promoter in, um, man, I did it in um, Garden City, Kansas. Kansas. Mm -hmm. I got picked up in Lincoln, Nebraska, Lincoln, Kansas, in a little-ass small town. And, and we went, I went to go do the show over there. The guy paid me cash, both shows were packed. But the second show, I went to go party with them. They went to a bar, the all the beers were like $4. Like real cheap. This guy took me to his house. Man, it was crazy. Like I was, I was, I was partying with him next to his crib. His <laughs> baby's crib. Give him a high five, mijo. Damn. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Like I should've just went to the room and relaxed instead of waking up all tired. Yeah, I mean, those people are probably waiting for that day all year because they have nothing else going on in that town. So they're so excited. The promoter can't wait till you come in and all that, and then he's going to do it up, and it's crazy. And it's to the nth degree, and you just, you're just there to do a show. You get messed up in you got to be an animal how to be partying like that. I wonder yeah. anybody party that like, like that at that level. That's crazy. We all did it. <laughs> we all did it. No big deal. We all party like that at that level. Because I remember, like, uh, when I w when I ran into um, April Macy, and she told me, she goes, Felipe, you know that club over there, the Wild Wild West? I said, which one? The one over there in Odessa? Yeah. He goes, she, she started laughing, like, they all went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> they all went to a federal prison, even the host. What's his name? The magician? John Roman. John Roman. John Roman went to prison. He yeah. went to prison for, for a, a year bit. because the owner, the it. owner put the bar in his name. <coughs> yeah. What bar was this? The Wild Wild West. You know that that comedy club where the guy paid you cash, even though there were seven people in the audience. No, I never got to that shit. I worked with John Roman one time. What? John Roman had me at one bar where the guy was a biker. That's where I met. Yeah, her. the biker. The girl, the, the wife the had big boobs. Gigantic. Yes. Tits. Odessa, Texas? Yes. Gigantic. She went tits. to prison first for embezzling at her right. job. Damn. Yeah, from her job. So she was gone already. She was not there no more. But then her husband was there. He was a biker, and so was John <laughs> Roman. And they all went to prison after her. And then where's John Roman now? He had a He's job. out. Yeah, I think he had to do a year. Maybe two. Yeah. Oh my because God. Because of those that, people. Yeah. But that big foot, the big fat Alex, he went to 25 years. Yeah. What did Alex book? The big fat guy, right? Oh, the owner. I don't know. The owner, I think, was that blonde guy. Looked kind of like a troll doll. His hair was all crazy, right? No, no, no. Chubby? No, that no, that was another guy. That was, oh. the owner was a guy, a real fat Mexican dude. Because oh, I remember I like the first time I did the gig, he goes, "Hey, Felipe, we're gonna go to the, we're to go to the, we're gonna go to the fights. You wanna come?" And I said, "Nah, I'm good. I wanna go." It's gonna be fun. We're gonna go eat after. He goes, I mean, I'm in the car. He goes, what kind of fights is these? He goes, dog fights. He goes, nah, I'm good. Eh? Oh. And I, I got out of the car and I went and I started walking back to my hotel room. 
Then there was the other one in Midland. That's the one, I think. No, that's the one in Odessa with John Roman. Then there was another guy that was a magician. Oh, that that dude, Jenkins. Yes. He yeah, he's crazy, in Texas. man. Yeah. He was wanted in Houston because he was married in two different states. <laughs> wow. Polygamy? Bigamy. 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 The bigamy. He was wanted for polygamy. <laughs> bigamy. So the first time I did it, the first time I did Midland was a holiday in. And they did Latin comedy, and it was me and Marilyn, and Paul had done it, so he referred Marilyn. And that's when the guy tried to break into Marilyn Martinez's room. What a, what a fucking mistake that would have been. <laughs> trying to eat Marilyn's pussy in the middle of the night. Even Harvey Weinstein wouldn't eat a Marilyn's pussy. <laughs> kind of the so I'm in my room, and I hear boom, 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 boom. It's Marilyn fucking yelling. Some guy's breaking into my room. Help me. So I went over there, and we locked the door, and that was the end of that. And then I went back a second time as a headliner. And when I walked in, he handed an eight ball in my hand. He put a coke. It was me and somebody else was featuring. And he was the house MC. So whoever was, what was the fat kid from Houston? The one that helped you out? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, um, yeah, that's He was the him. feature act. So yeah. he gave us both, both eight balls. Both of us. An eight ball. Before the first show. That fool stunk, bro. He, was, he, wore, he didn't wear no socks. He wore boots with no socks. Listen to me. I put the eight ball in my pocket. I did the first show. I did the second show. I got no reason to lie to nobody. I was a junkie at the time. Do you know that he had an eight ball, too? And at the end of the second show, he asked me if I had anything left. He had done the eight ball that he got during the first and the second show. You should have seen the shape of him on stage during the second show. Jawing, jaw going, sweating. And when he came off, I remember just looking at him like, I'm like, I got to get off this shit because that's me. But I remember him walking over to me going, hey, <laughs> do you have anything left? And I'm like, yeah, I got my whole eight ball. Why did you do yours? He goes, it's gone. <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> you're I saying I oh had, my god yeah I thought I had problems <laughs> then the following week they were on stage and the DA raided the joint while they were on stage the DA raided the joint twice while the club was going on so this is like a comic con stage like raid <laughs> DEA <laughs> that's that how like fucking a crazy that place was they had <laughs> the Mexicans with the belt buckles yeah, bro. So that's why I didn't know because the somebody, that dark guy, Mexican, yeah. Bro. Dark, they had like dark. Chums. Bro, that's all that was. They didn't even speak the language. And then there was another <laughs> one in Corpus Christi that was like a soda shop. It had like, uh, it had the, what's that hamburger joint that's 50, over 50 years old? Whataburger? No, the other one. They have it up in Century, up in. Uh, Sonic? Uh, up in Universal. When you wore steak and shit, whatever. Steak and, steak and, and it looks like the, the, they have like milk caps. And Johnny shit. Rockets. Johnny oh. Rockets. It's, it was it was a comedy club that was an old Johnny oh, Rockets. Oh, that, that, that's across the street from the shittiest hotel room ever. <laughs> and that's the place? Yeah, that place, that place is still there, but it's called something now. And they, they did comedy they there. They did comedy there. It was there. called Water or something. Corpus Christi. They did comedy across. And I'm, I went back to the burger hotel. Stand. And Marilyn called me. She goes, did you get your Coke? She goes, she's got a package of coke for you. It's fucking amazing. Come over here and take mine. And I went over to Marilyn's room and opened up hers. It was just a chunk of, of yellow. I put it in my pocket and I ran back to the club. And I go, well, you looking for me? He goes, yeah, I got something for you. <laughs> and he gave me a chunk. Those are fucking crazy. What's the, what's the, don't they have a plane in Corpus? Remember they have like a plane? A boat. No, uh, a, a plane. They have lights on it. In Corpus Christi, we were in that hotel one time. Me and Freddie Soto did a barn. <laughs> there was a barn in Corpus Christi, dog. I remember getting. You know, like when you're in the comedy store and you're like, I'm on my way up. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm on my way up. I did the improv Latino night. I did the Laugh Factory Latino night. I'm on my way Show up. Show business at its finest. And all of a sudden, Mark Babbitt calls you. You're opening up for Freddie in Corpus. I go, perfect. Mark Babbitt. It was a fucking barn. Corpus Christi, like they shot, they had to push the the, the straw to the side. But hey, they put hey man, hey, outside of that outside of that gig, there was no cement, huh? It was all it was all it was grass, like a dirt road, and the parking lot was all dirt, right? Bro, it was crazy. Damn, <laughs> I remember going there. I remember Joe Medina. I remember going in there, going, "What the fuck is going on?" 
Did they have dancing and it was like a corral they were going around in a circle, huh? <laughs> Dog, this is craziness. We did a so, circle. We did thank first of all, thank God for Texas. Because if it wasn't for Texas, I wouldn't have a comedy career. Because nobody else booked me like Texas. You could say whatever you want in Texas. You could tour a whole year in Texas. You could tour a whole and year. And eat in pretty Texas. well, yeah. When I used to remember remember <laughs> there's no Froggy Bottoms no more. There's no club in Lubbock no more. All those places are shut down. There was a time when you had froggy, froggy bottoms. The chick had the biggest tits you ever saw in your life. The daughter, her name was Julia. <laughs> okay, the biggest tits, and it was a family-run comedy club. For years, it was run by like real people, and then one day they they, they didn't want to do it no more. They just said we don't want to do it, so they sold it to a Mexican family, who turned the front into a Mexican restaurant. Delicious. Julia was no beauty queen winner. But she had the biggest tits in the world. They didn't get any you more. You suck them, bro. All the chat that comes out. They, didn't, they didn't get any more than 20 people. They would tell you that when they <laughs> called you. We don't get no more than 20 people. This is what we're going to pay you. I took the week with Favement, and that was one of the funniest weeks of my life because it was regulars. And everybody, whatever you wanted a beer in there, you didn't raise. You know how when you go to a comedy club, yeah. the waitress comes up to you? No. During your show, he would just yell, the customers would just yell, Julia! <laughs> During your show. Like, it didn't matter what joke you Julia. were. Julia, man, I got. And Julia would come out with her big fat tits jumping and she'd take your drink order or nachos or fucking <laughs> bean and cheese burrito. <laughs> but they would just yell, Julia! <laughs> to this day, sometimes when I see Fabian, I go, Julia! And we both just giggle <laughs> because it was a whole weekend. It was four shows of everybody going, Julia! Who, she was the only wait staff. Her mother ran the kitchen, and her father helped her and cashed the register and sat people. <laughs> then that kid opened up a comedy club next to Lubbock, and he OD'd from Seattle. Who? We were just talking about him. Somebody asked me if I had worked that room. Kelly Moran had a room next to Lubbock. There was a ton of rooms. Yeah. Tons of rooms in Texas. Houston had... Spellbinders, the lap stop, and the lap spot. And the Danny Martinez's room yeah. at one time. You know the Spellbinders were the club where Ralphie May fell through the stage. <laughs> he was 600 pounds, and he fell through the stage, and he sued the club. So the club was still open after Ralphie sued it. For about, after Ralphie moved to L.A., the club was still open. And he, w whenever Ralphie would say something to break my balls, I wouldn't say nothing. Like, hey, man. Have you spoken to the lady from Spellbinders lately? And she'd go, fuck you, because he ended up suing her. <laughs> so if you call Spellbinders, do not use Ralphie's name as a reference. So I would tell him, if you fucking keep breaking my balls, I'm going to call that lady and use you as a reference. He fell through the fucking stage. Yeah. He came out of the thing going, that's all, folks. <laughs> that's how it went down, Big Daddy. <laughs> 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 like it went under. Right he went the right through the stage, He got up there. It was like, a chimney, bro. On like the 18th minute, it just broke. <laughs> and he went right down like a bag of fucking nails. Fucking tremendous. How, remember, remember that dude in Houston? I, I think he was a manager or owner. Had the worst weed in the whole wide world, bro. And his brother was a DJ. He's the one I took off with that video game. Remember? It was all Reggie, or what they call it over there, Reggie, right? Yeah. Stress-ass weed. Mexican weed. He always had pounds of there it. There was a skinny kid that was the manager at the yeah. right, Laugh Stop. Laugh Stop! Mexican kid. Sweetheart of a kid. Both of the owner there? Mark Babbitt. Mark Babbitt. And then they had the, the Mexican kid that was his cousin that used to be the DJ. Yeah. He quit, and he sold Coke and Reefer. So when you came to town, the guy's name was David. Yeah. You called David, and you told David to have everything <laughs> ready for you. And when you walked into the lap stop, he'd have everything ready for you. Coke, weed, whatever you needed, everything was there. What was that place you went over there, man? He said you, you, like, you always ate those dumplings, but never got to go there. Auntie Chang's Dumpling Palace. Oh. I loved all that in Houston. I loved that whole Good comedy. food over there, I right? loved the whole comedy scene in Texas. Listen, I, you, you have this kid, you know, I have my wife, I have the podcast. <clears throat> it's like I tell my agent all the time, like, I apologize, you know, because I can't do the things I used to do. I would love to just do a Texas run for three weeks. It'll be badass, bro. I'll go with you. You know, just a Texas run. Corpus, 
all those great cities, Austin, Lubbock, Corpus, Austin, Corpus, Tech. You know, just it never ends. You could, you could, you could a tour a year in Texas. Fuck it, stop by Waco. Waco, you could just live down there. I used to pretty much stay with a girl in Houston during the week, an open micer. I would pay a couple dollars, and then I would book the whole month of July in Houston and just stay with her. Is that the week you almost died? No, that was Beaumont. Cause I was the same girl, huh? No. Cause you were like you said you told me, man, Felipe, man, if it wasn't for the Xanax, I would have died. No, <laughs> it, it was the, the, the Coke would have kept you. The Coke saved your life. Both of them, yeah, the Coke. And saved I'm like an life. idiot. A month later, try the same thing. Yeah, in Beaumont, Texas, bro, was where I almost died. You, st- that, was, that was the one time you stood there till till Monday. Wednesday. <laughs> Fuck! I remember you said like Wednesday. you messed your plate. You said, Fuck it. I messed up. Sunday, I slept all day. I woke up Tuesday, I was still sick. I woke up Monday, I was still sick. I woke up Tuesday, I was still sick. Wednesday, I got up and I was walking around, but my face was still bent. It was like I had gotten a stroke. The Valiums, there was so many in my blood system that I, I still couldn't talk. And I was talking like this, and my wife's like, when are you coming home? She was like, like fucking Brad Garrett. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay the week. I'm going to do some, some showcases down here. And I remember that that Wednesday, my friend's, that girl's boyfriend picked me up. And he had free passes for the Intercontinental Hotel. His company that he worked for had an account there, and they had like three rooms. So I stayed in there for three days and rehabbed <laughs> until the fucking Valiums came out of my system again. It would just numbed out all your facial muscles? It was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. It was one of the times I had to step back and go, wow, I got to stop this. The, the thing that was the funniest out of all that was that that Saturday night I ran out of Coke. And I called this kid, and he goes, I'll pick you up. I don't know if you want to do business with these people. I go, I just want to do an eight ball. Let's go. And he took me, <laughs> and he took me to a town that's really racist. It's where the KKK is behind Bo, uh, Beaumont. I think it's called Vider. I think. Don't don't quote me on that. And he took me to a KKK place at four in the morning. Like they had the tattoos, the picture of Hitler's on the wall, the whole thing. Supremacist. Supremacist. And I walked in with him, and there were like eight of those guys. And the guys like, yeah, can I get an eight ball? And he's like, what's your name? Joey. Joey. And then. One guy goes, man, I think I saw you in the longest yard. And I remember when I go, I, as I was breaking out the money, they were all $100 bills. So I go, how much for the eight ball? And they go, 300 And the guy goes, what's your last name? And I go, Diaz. And they just froze. Like They're like, we shouldn't be doing business with you. But I gave them the $300. They gave me the eight ball, and I just walked out of there. I was like, they're going to kill me. And they say a word to me. Why? Because... Ben, racism stops when Ben Franklin shows up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Once Ben Franklin shows up, you know what? Harmony. I like Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fool? This Tuesday, you can catch Joe Diaz at the Comedy Store at... Um, Tonight? No, next Tuesday. Thursday. Next Thursday? January, 30, January 31st? Yeah. You doing it too? Yeah, I'm doing a second show. Okay. With um, our boy, Skyler Stone, right? Skyler's shows. I think he's putting two on that night, right? Yeah, I'm doing it at 10.30 or 10 o'clock. I think 10 o'clock or 10, whatever, yeah. whichever one. The one with, and, and Anthony Jeselnik is on the one you're on, right? And George? George Perez. George and Perez. he's on with Lee Sai on the first show. He's on the first show. Joey. I'm on the first show? <coughs> <coughs> the yeah. weed going to show up with his weed. You mean speed weed? Speed weed. He's usually there. That dude's got some good blunts. He's got yeah. the best blunts in the business. I don't know about the business. Oh, he does. Louis, Louis the 13th has the best blunts Let me in the tell you business. Something. That fucking dude, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where he gets them from. And I don't like blunts. I'm telling you that he's got the fucking, those things fuck you up. I like those blunts. I like backwards. You fuck with backwards? That's I don't back, know what backwards, backwards is. Backwards my shit. Though. Blunts. <laughs> That's a paper it's one? The real, yeah. But it's the real tobacco leaf. Blunts, you Dutch masters. It. So it gives you real cancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that artificial does. cancer. That's what that does. That gives you real cancer. <laughs> the other stuff. I'm very sad there ain't no more stars. I thought you had like a like a spare bag bag somewhere. No. They don't even make them as strong as strong as those anymore. They don't make them no more. 
Sad. I think he's making them, but there's certain places that sell them. Yeah, still. it's all on the DL. They're, they're not selling. He just he just stopped calling. He called one day, and I go, what time you want to meet? And he goes, from now on, I got to charge you for the bags. <coughs> and I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, I'll call you tomorrow. He never called back. And at that time... I had given. I, I hadn't had an edible for like four months, three months. Then I went to Boston. And I ate a half. Somebody threw one up on stage. And I took a bite out of it, and they weren't doing anything to me, so I just stopped. This week was the first time I did those edibles. I did the capsules. They fucked you up. And they fucked me up. But I don't need a thousand milligrams no more. Just a hundred. But I'm getting pretty high just smoking the reefer. How much? How? What was the milligrams on those capsules? They're a hundred a piece. Hundred each. Wow. I haven't checked the ones. We have some capsules, but they're CBD and THC, equal amount, one to one. But I don't know the milligrams. I gotta look at that. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I, I like need to I learn like more about the milligrams. I like getting high, and smoking <laughs> now because I, I get high since I don't eat the edibles no more. I like nice and fucking stoned. I love getting high. Me I don't too. like alcohol. You know, at the end of it all, I don't like nothing except my reefer. Like I don't want to be part of Sober October. <laughs> There's a part of the night. Listen, the baby goes to bed late thirty. My wife follows her about twenty to nine. I'm done with her. She she goes to bed. <laughs> done with her. So to eleven o'clock, that's my time. Sometimes I watch TV, but most of the time I just go in my office and I just listen to music. And there's nothing that brings me more satisfaction than getting high and listening to old music. Sometimes I go to my office office with a podcast. And I got the vinyl, and I just bust out vinyl, fucking for two hours, smoke dope, and listen to old records. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> that's my. That's the only reason 16 why. Sixteen again. <laughs> that's why I wouldn't give up reefer. That is the reason why. It's the last thing that keeps me. It's the only thing I'm doing that's illegal. But I take anxiety pills. Those little faggy ones. They don't do nothing to nobody. Not you know prescription know? ones. No, I get prescription. Oh, prescription ones. Oh, okay. I eat them when I go to the store before I get on stage. I don't do nothing to you. That's as illegal as I get. <laughs> <laughs> and I smoke weed. That's it. That's the only thing I'm doing. I don't even shoplift lighters from but you know what? <laughs> like, But you know what? Is, but, well, you know, look. AA and NA, they have like a, what, 20%, 25 maybe success rate. They have a 75% yeah. failure rate, right? And there are so many of you guys who have come off of, harder things and just gone on to just you just stay steady with weed no alcohol no nothing and that's enough for you guys and and i think that uh there's something that needs to be researched in that i think sober because and these diet programs are aren't horrible working. words yeah first of well, all i think that's sober, what makes you want to fall off yes. the wagon sober and diet are horrible <laughs> words they are horrible words that should be removed should be removed from our vocabulary. Because it already stops you before you want to start. I yeah. don't know. Listen, I want you to be happy. Let's start right, right there. I want Felipe to be happy. I want you to be happy. I want the manager to be happy. If the manager diets all day, if she sticks to her Weight Watcher points all day, and at night she has a half a cup of Briar's ice cream, Me what am I going to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to look at her and say, stick to your diet? What <laughs> fucking diet? We're all going to die. <laughs> when you're laying in that casket, do you think that piece of bread made a difference in your death when you put butter on it at the restaurant? Hell no. I'm, telling you, I'm telling you not to eat the whole loaf. <laughs> <laughs> but to eat a piece of bread and butter, it ain't going to kill you. You just lift an extra weight at the gym or whatever. When I got off cocaine... It was the saddest day of my life <laughs> because I thought I wouldn't be funny anymore. Me I too. Thought that there was so many doubts, but I also knew one thing: when I was facing federal prison charges, federal prison charges, federal time, they couldn't get me to stop doing drugs. They couldn't get. They would come. To, I had a twenty-four hour. I think a knock on my door and piss. You know how many times they came to my house in two years? Eleven. You know how many times I opened the door? Zilch. I don't open the door for nobody. Bring a warrant, bitch. And even <laughs> then, you're gonna, I'll wake up myself in this motherfucker. You understand me? My point being is that you can't put parameters like that on people. 
I want you to give something up. I want you to look at yourself and go, okay, I like my burritos. I like my bean and cheese burritos. I love my cupcakes, and I love my ice cream. You got to give up two of those. Just give up two of those. It's called a lifestyle change. I still want you to have something to be happy. If it's one cigarette a day, then so be it. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, but when I was fighting myself not to do coke, not to do coke, then I'd do coke. When I'd stop and just leave it to God. Just leave it. Same thing with diets. I'm not going to eat bread. Good luck. Good luck! <laughs> Good luck! I'm only going to eat that, this and this and this. What happens when you go on the road? You think they got those at the Holiday Inn? You think they had that Holiday Inn? Did they let the show stick okay? You know, well, I'm going to juice, and I'm, I'm going to love it. And then, what happens when you go on the road? You're going to juice on the road. Well, that should be a spot. That's what you want to do on your fucking road work is happen to find the nearest juice spot in Oklahoma. <laughs> what are your fucking chances? You know what I'm saying? So you got to be realistic with your goals. I always knew that I didn't need to do the coke. I don't need to do heroin. I don't need to do pills. I don't need to do nothing. The reefer is like a kid having a teddy bear. <laughs> I love teddy bears. <laughs> we all like that teddy bear. You know, I sucked the pacifier until I was six. I broke one of my mother's Chinese dolls, and my mother said, you got, you got, you got two deals here. You could either give me all the pacifiers, because I had like 80 of them. I wouldn't uh, put where I'm at in person. Like, I'd be outside fighting Rudy the Haitian, and when things got deep, I'd say, hold on for a second. I'd run to a little corner. And I'd set my pacifier, <laughs> and then I'd come back. It was like a cigarette yeah, for most people. oral fixation. That's yeah, right. it was a terrible. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. I would get into an argument with my mother and then go, I'll be right back. And I'd go in the closet, suck my pacifier. Now, bitch, what were you saying? <laughs> and I'd come back. Revitalize. So my mother told me, you either had to give the pacifiers up <clears throat> or give me all your savings. I had like $700 saved, so I had to give her the fuck. I said, you ain't getting my money. You have to kill me to take my seven hundred. At six years old. So I gave it, yeah, because I would <laughs> save money from the bar. I was, I was bartending. I was working at the bar as like a, like a bar back slash janitor. She would make me clean the toilets and fucking take the tampons out of the period box. She told me there was a buried treasure in there one day. They even gave me a map. The bar. T- the bar t- gave me a map. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like a little fag. They say that for the heart. I used to make my own maps and make believe like I found the quarter. Like my mother would have a, <laughs> like, like my mother would have a roll of quarters, and I would open it and take a quarter out and put it under a beer box, and I go, "Mom, look, I found this map," and the bartender's name was Pepe, but he had thick glasses, so they called him Pepe Ciego, Pepe the blind guy, because he had thick glasses. So one day, him and my mom set me up. I got to the bar and they're like, "Come here, we found the uh, uh, map," and I'm like. Wait a second, I'm the, I thought I'm the only one that drew maps here. <laughs> you know, I didn't say that. Do we just become best friends? I'm brand? like, let me get the map. And they should gave me the map, and the money was hidden in the woman's bathroom in a box next to the woman's bathroom. I didn't know what that box was. I didn't know what that was, the period box. And this was in the 70s, and they didn't have tampons. They had Kotex, those big, thick bricks women put between their legs. It was like With a belt. With a belt. It was like an inch <laughs> fucking long and they rolled it up, and it was like a fucking disgusting big pad. And I remember going in there with like, my pirate hat on and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Walking the steps and go, looking at the bathroom. Hey, you guys. And then seeing the fucking tub, and I'm like, there's two of them, because my mother had two bathrooms next to each other, two women's stalls. So I'm like, oh, I'm a rich man. And I'll never forget sticking my hand that motherfucker, and that thing was stuck, and I pulled that bloody thing out. And it was rolled up like a like a fucking like with those cold cut rolls, yeah, with blood, masuki juice. That was like roll. fucking general. It was <laughs> dog. I threw it in there and ran out of there crying and shit. I, I don't even watch Kotex commercials. Like when they come on, I change them. I'm still pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. So that that that's the thing. I don't like the word diet, uh, and I don't like the word sober. I think you used to fall off the wagon harder and faster when you were trying to low carb and stay sober. Those were like the. There you go. Well, shut up. Yeah, that's that true. last time. I was that just thinking was about really it right hardcore, now. Our worst times together. I was just thinking that about it right now. I should. You were that trying time, to deprive yourself. That time when I fell off, I said no to the what I really wanted to eat. Like a Sunday, a, right? A or Sunday, something like that. A Sunday somewhere. Ice cream Sunday. And I, and then I said yes to the crack. Yeah. But I should have just said, if I would have ate that Sunday, I know that later on I would have been stronger yeah. to say no to the crack. 
but it you became. Gave yourself something. So you I, already fed told, your I, already something. I already told myself no to what I really wanted. Yeah. And now this one, I really wanted too, but I couldn't deny myself. So I drank. I took a shot. <coughs> shot of courage. <laughs> I always know when I'm gonna fall out, because at first it starts off with me wanting a drink. Oh, I never had a enchilada, or I tell people, or I say, let me smell that. Let me smell that. Then later on, when I'm alone, it's like one beer in the green room by itself. Well, I prefer nobody say I took a little sip, but um, but that's really because I do. I really don't want to drink. You don't like alcohol. No, I really don't want to drink. I really want to do some coke, really, really bad. But I know if I if I'm buzzed, it's easier for me to ask somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. You I remember when now you don't like alcohol. I've seen you drink every type of alcohol, and you don't have a specific drink. You just drink to get drunk. And you don't like any of it. It just you, you wince. That's like funny when, when I'm that time when I started partying hard, and I called you from from Houston, Texas. Hey, find me somebody. And I was partying with the same guy you mentioned for three nights straight. He was the only guy I knew. He would go. <laughs> he, didn't have, he, he, he didn't have one dollar, but he was there. He was he, he making was phone always, calls. It's crazy the people, the journeys that we bumped into on the road. I think of a lot of those people now. I know, I know. There's still a waitress from El Paso I talked to. I still we call each other every ninety days. She lives in Iowa, Kansas. And whenever like a comedian goes to her <laughs> neighborhood, she'll call me and get tickets or whatever. So but I still talk to her. Bunny. Bunny. Bunny's a good lady. There's a lot of people we've met on the road over the years that were fucking great people, man, at different Those clubs. Those partied hard. Like that lady, a girl, her then this Asian girl and her crazy husband. Where? In El Paso. El Paso was one of those places that was scary. Like, that was scary. Like, Wednesday night, Tuesday night was military night. And you'd go there, and you'd go to that bar they went to, and you'd meet. Everybody had Coke. Everybody had Coke, you know. The scariest thing that ever happened to me in El Paso was going home with a girl on a Wednesday night, doing everything, having a great time, snorting until 6 in the morning, and then, like, going to take a piss, and I'm coming back, and she's changing. And she's like, I got to go pick up my kid and take him to school, and I'm like, what are you talking about? You could snort coke like this and drink and go pick up your kid. But then the scariest was Friday night when they came back to the show and they introduced you to their husband. <laughs> and you don't know what to say. You just shake the guy's hand. and She's like, that's who I was with till two the other night, right? We had a good time. And you're like, huh? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's big and muscular and shit. El Paso. The original club, the one, the one that had the little German the, store downstairs. The one that had the gay guy that was the manager. Yeah, John. John, that was he the, was cool. One of the best clubs ever. That's where they had the Mexican guy that cleaned the club afterward, but he was also the house MC. So you would he would uh, when you'd walk in, Bart would say, "Give give me a long intro." So the first night it was like you know I, I did basketball, I did Mad TV. Bart's like, that's too short. I want you to write a couple paragraphs to bust his balls. So you have to go. He would go up there and go, hi, Joey went to Catholic school. <laughs> he graduated from McKinley in 1978. And even he was reading it going, what the fuck? <coughs> that's how we busted that guy's balls. And I'll never forget New Year's. He kept saying, please, don't throw confetti up in the air. Because me and my wife, the vacuum won't suck it up. Because they were the janitors at the club. <laughs> Dog, I threw confetti on purpose. I threw pounds out of confetti. The next day he was walking around. I had to get on my hands and knees and pick one up. We were there for 12 hours. <laughs> all those clubs have memories that I tell Lee all the time and other comics that what I'm doing on stage now is the work we were doing in the 90s. Like, it's starting to pay now. Like, now yeah. I see that road work on stage. Like, I go, oh, I got this from that time in Buffalo. Oh, I got this from that time in Iowa. You know, no good deed goes unpunished. unpunished. Like, all those rooms were a nightmare to do. Well, we cracked jokes about them. Well, we all got something from them. You know what I'm saying? At the end, we all won. Yeah. No matter how bad the room was, no matter if you, if you had to sleep in the fucking kitchen, the old Cleveland club, you had to sleep in the kitchen. The 
the guy that would wake you up was the guy delivering beer in the morning. <laughs> you couldn't leave till the guy delivered beer. Like, they would lock you in there at night. And you couldn't leave till the guy delivered beer. And you went outside, and you fucking highs. Like, you're like, what the fuck? I can't see because you've been in the darkness. I got a thousand of those stories, you know. We paid our fucking dues, you know. I mean, that's... And by paying your dues, sometimes there's going to be fuck-ups, you know. There's going to be a lot of fuck-ups. Did you ever, like, I remember we have Fred Stoller on the show, and he was talking about, yeah, I did this room one time in Tucson. The, the, the waitress and half of the staff was staying in the, green, in the, in the condo. And that was that club in Tucson, man, with fucking uh, Gary Hood. Oh, laughs. 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 Yeah, and then Willie Barsena stood there. And Joy, Joy Medina, Willie Barsena were staying in the same comedy condo with two way staff and a manager. <laughs> and they were all watching TV, and they are like, little by little, go to bed. <laughs> like, if I had to stay there now, I probably wouldn't even stay there. Fuck that. <laughs> all right. Never happened to you? <laughs> Condos were the worst. There's always that old comic that was gonna take Barry over, Diamond. That was gonna take over the world, but he's you're there that week, and he's staying there for a few days because <laughs> he's friends with the owner. Like there's always something weird in those fucking condos. The, that condo shit was a life of death. But you do it. You don't even know you do. It. You're just so happy to be there. It's happy man. You're just so happy to be there as a comic that when you look back on them, you're like, I remember the condo. In Dallas. <laughs> what was that club in Dallas? It's still there. Hyenas? Hyenas. 15 years ago, the cousin, the owner's cousin, is Spanish. And he got to talk to Latino Laugh Festival and to adding that into the festival. It was an extra hundred bucks. That's when the festival yeah. would pay you 50 fucking dollars. Yeah. So this guy would pay you a hundred dollars for the show. And I went to the condo, and I went across the street, and I bought uh, one of those those rolls for the big pound cake. Yeah. I bought pound cake for breakfast, and I put it in the kitchen. I didn't open it, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, the next morning, I looked in there, and there was roaches in everything. Damn. Roaches. W there were roaches in the refrigerator. That's when it's bad. <laughs> and you went into the con and I was the headliner. But when I walked into the features room, there were t towels as a curtain. I remember going to fucking Chilku Charlie's in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking Alaska, and the bedroom had two windows broken. It was the liquor room to the club, which was across the street, and they turned it into a condo. There was a bed, a little stand-up shower, and I went up there with my girlfriend at the time. I didn't know. It was just a single fucking bed. The windows were broken. Breeze was flowing in. You could hear the breeze off the fucking Alaskan water. But who the fuck knows? My first, my second road gig. First one was in Ogden, Utah, and the first Tribble. And the first one was in Rock Springs, Wyoming. Rock Springs, Wyoming is such a bad town that the feds had to go in there and take it over. I remember watching the report on 60 Minutes going, Rock Springs, Wyoming, the mafia, what are they talking about? <laughs> Wait till you get there. When I saw Rock Springs on the itinerary, I go, I'm going to Rock Springs, Wyoming. The Rock Springs, Wyoming is where the mob takes the hookers from Vegas when their pussies are busted, and they <laughs> flies them to Rock Springs, and they have strip clubs there, and they put them like through a farm league. They stitch up the pussy. Oh, ice it baby. up. They, they ice it up a little bit. Once their assholes get busted in Vegas <laughs> from like a year-long stretch of sucking cock in Vegas, they go to Rock Springs, Wyoming, and they get their life together. They got like mini camps and training camps. Dog, for like $5, they give you a lap dance in Rock Springs, Wyoming. It's the best lap dance you've ever had. They had a pizza place in there that was fed. That was the mafia. It was crazy. It was crazy. The feds had to come take the town back. But I still remember going to that town and them telling me I never met the headliner before. I didn't know who he was. And them like, we only got one room. You have to share a room. I had to share a room with a fucking man. You know how bad that is? Like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> we were snoring all night. <laughs> Pass me the nail clippers. My balls. That was terrible. That was like the beginning of comedy going, I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this shit. You got any toothpaste? Fuck. But 
we're here. We're here now, right? 27 years later, we're still here banging it out. What's up, fool? What's right. up, fool? <laughs> All right, man. January 26th. I'm in Turlock, California, man. That shit is sold out. What's Turlock? Turlock, California. It's by um, Fresno. North of Modesto. <laughs> yeah, North of Modesto. Visalia, California. February 1st, Fox Theater. Sold out. There's still tickets available for Coachella, February 2nd, Spotlight 29. Tickets still available. Birmingham, Alabama. I'm there February 15th through the 17th at the Stardust in Stardust, Hoover. Stardome. Ala- Stardome in Hoover, Alabama. <coughs> Raleigh, North Carolina, February 22nd through the 24th at the brand new 460 seat New Improv. Where you at, dog? Uh, Turlock this weekend. All right. Lisa, where you at? Mopping? I'll be home mopping. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Joey Coco Diaz. Next Thursday, January 31st, Joe Diaz will be on the first show at 8.30 with Lee Syed. And I'll be in the second show with George, with George Perez, the El Chivo. And who else? Anthony Jeselnik. Mm-hmm. Jeselnik. Jeselnik. Some more people it's a good time for comedy, people. Jeselnik. A bunch of stars <laughs> at the show. It's a good time. I think the comedy is probably the best lineups ever. Yeah. As far as, like, you look at the... Like if you look at, the uh, when I look at the Gotham audience, the, the Gotham lineup, and I compare it to the Comedy Store lineup, I'll compare them, man. I'd rather, go, I'd rather see the Comedy Store one as a comedy fan if I was not a comedian, just to rub elbows. Mm-hmm. Like, as I know, man, like, I know how to lurk. Like, if people, like, if I know, like, if, Joe, if I'm a big fan of the Church of What's Happening and the Perez stories, I go over there, bro, and I buy me a ticket for all three shows. Or just start, and I just start, like, you know, lear- like, there's some people that know how to do it. Yeah, you could learn. There's, the there's little, people who know how to do it. Like that one little area. fan <laughs> that showed up to your show on the same night in, on a Tuesday. In went, Riverside? Went to go see you in Riverside, got in his car, and drove to the comedy store and saw me at 1030 and handed me a blunt, too. There's some good people out there. Uh, Very good Frank. people, man. Good people. The church family strong. They come out. They support. I give them my love all the time. They're strong people. What are you going to fucking do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next time, Joey, we're going to have dinner, okay? Whatever you want. I don't eat that vegan shit, though, so you're done. <laughs> <laughs> got to bring some vegan barbacoa tacos. They're I delicious. don't even want to smell that vegan shit. Vegan ta- tamales, bro. <laughs> That's not happening. You're crazy. I don't even walk into Thai places. So I ain't going to walk into a vegan place with people <laughs> with sandals on. You don't like Chinese vegetarian food? Vegetarian shoes. No, I love Chinese food. When I came to this country, that's all there was was Chinese food. I know, so man. I, I never forget that. Then it was Japanese food, and so now I don't eat Korean or Thai food. I just stick with the Chinese and Japanese food. You I remember flag. when we did Que Loco with Mike Robles. It was uh, Angel Salazar, you and I, and um, a bunch of the New York comics. We were all eating, and you ordered that stuff. I never seen that food, but you knew how to order. Bro. This food was ordering fast. I was ordering like a rookie, bro. Basic stuff. Orange chicken. You know how you know, we do it. I said, give me some barbecue. With them. They know that red barbecue. And give me some fried rice and orange chicken. This fool over there, give me, give, give me one of those. Bur- he ordered like this burrito, bro. Mushu. Mushu, mushu. Nice and crispy, and I'll put the sauce I on. I never heard of that shit, bro. Ooh, mushu pork, nice. <laughs> mushu shrimp, you get a little egg foo young on the side. What are you, fucking crazy? <laughs> I grew up on that shit, though. Mushu, mushu. I mm. fucking had Chinese when I was in Brooklyn. They had that, some good Chinese food. I don't fuck around, though. Whenever I go home, I get Chinese. Anywhere on the East Coast. That's the first. Nyack? Oh, they got good yeah, Chinese. Yeah, they got some bomb-ass Chinese food tonight. Yeah, good Nyack Chinese. has good Chinese Pittsburgh food. Pittsburgh got good mm-hmm. Chinese. Philly got good Chinese. Delivered right to the hotel. You don't even have to leave the hotel. You said that you, you, stood, at the, you, you stood across the street from the Manhattan in New Jersey, and you said there's a Cuban restaurant? Yep, I stay in Edgewater, and I, and I could deliver from the Cuban restaurant. And I could go up the hill and hit Rudy's right off Gorge Road. I'm a fucking motherfucker. But when I go with the family, next time I will go with the family, I'm not staying in Jersey. It's next time, next yeah. December, yeah, I'm the, the ferry. The ferry ride is good. It takes a lot out of you. <laughs> yeah. The baby thinks she's Christopher Columbus when she goes across <laughs> the ferry. I'm looking for fucking, I'm looking for bodies. I got her up on the deck. And my wife's like, what are you doing out there? It's cold. I want to show her a body. Because everybody jumps off the bridge every three days. There's always, anytime you see Law and Order, one doesn't it start with a body in the Hudson. There's always a body in the <laughs> Hudson. So, yeah, I'm just going to stay in the city. But I still make the, when I play Gotham, 
I stay in Edgewater because I get to see my friends and my family, and I'm right there. It's a ferry right away. It's thirteen dollars away. I get off the ferry. They got a bus that takes me to Gotham, or I take an Uber. You know me, dog. No drama. I make it nice and simple. <laughs> What's up, full podcast? Yeah, dates coming up. I got, I got Vegas. Tre- I got Valentine's Day in San Jose. Then the following week, I'm at Treasure Island on Friday, and the Fox Theater in Tucson on Saturday. That's it for the month. Nice and easy, no drama, nobody gets their feelings hurt. I'm going to be at the Caroline's <laughs> in New York City, Jan- June 20th to the 22nd. Yeah. I'm bringing Lisa. Yeah, we're going to have fun. I'm bringing Rodrigo Torres, <laughs> Xavier Miles. Nah. Absolutely, always. What's up? Well, I might bring Isaac Hayes too, bro. I might even bring, sneak, bring the dog, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not bringing the dog. Squishy does New York. Squishy <laughs> does New York. No. Sorry about your cat, bro. I know. You got that fool forever, huh? Two of them, the brothers. The brothers left. It hurts more when a cat dies than when people die. You know what I'm saying? People die, you're like, fuck them. <laughs> the cats die, you're like, what the fuck? I see his ghost and shit. <laughs> There's one cat, Fidel, that when he died, it, it still fucks me up because he liked pudding. He liked, he liked jello or pudding. Crazy cats. So at night, when I would, like, even until today, some nights I'm sitting, I'm like, I go for one of those jello two point puddings. And I'll go get a pudding, and I would, like, fucking look to see where he was. And I'd see him on the couch, fucking passed out. And I'd tiptoe to the refrigerator, and I'd open up the refrigerator, take the pudding out. As I took the lid off, I took it off nice and easy so he wouldn't hear it. And by the time I was shaking the whipped cream, he'd be right behind me going, wow. <laughs> he fucking could smell that shit, dog. So Wake even right now, up. today, like there's days, I'm like, I want to chew my pudding. And I'll go get a pudding, and I'll turn around to see if he's dead. I'm like, fuck, he's been dead for a year and a half. He's been dead for like two years. But these other cats just died recently, and it was sad. It was a sad house. And we didn't say nothing to the baby. She didn't say a fucking word for a whole week and a half. And on her birthday party, she asked one of the kids, do you want to see my cat, Harry? Oh. And she came up to me, she's like, I can't find Harry. And I go, listen, Harry went for a ride. I'll be back in an hour or so. And she hasn't asked again, so thank fucking God. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Curiosity killed Sometimes the cat. Sometimes they're not ready for it. She knows Demi's gone. <laughs> Demi. Harry was her cat, so I don't think What's she was up, fool? Shout out to Cheesy Rivera. Color my footsteps. Michael Lubiano. El Navarro. Another knocker. Angel Destiny 727. Sammy Ali Alagon. Mike Lubano. Bailey Kritsky. Danny Joseph. What's up, fool? Give us some Toby Hicks. Somebody want some Toby Hicks? What it do out there, and yo? Sally, Sammy Ali Alagon. In the struggle. Thank you very much, oh, Rodrigo wow. Torres. Man, I'm glad you made it fine. Uh, Likewise, man. Hell yeah, man. Got out of I'm so glad, man. I, I would have sucked dick to be out there until Tuesday. Where? In, a In Rochester. Rochester. I was prepared too, bro. I left a little joint hidden somewhere. <laughs> yeah, dog. I always bring extra weed. <laughs> I always bring extra weed just in case. Because we always. had a roll of fatter ones because we smoked right before we took off. Yeah, I always bring extra weed just in case you get stuck. I bring a nice vapor pen. I hide it in my sleep apnea machine so I can hit it at the airport. <laughs> you hit it at the airport? Yeah, I don't hit the vapor pen when I'm home at all. So when I do hit it on the road every few <laughs> weeks, it hits me. So in the morning when I wake up, I don't have to go right downstairs. I'm I get a little paranoid, coffee in man. my room, hit the vapor pen, and then I go down and eat breakfast, then come up and wash my pussy and shit. <laughs> That's but right. The, but the vapor pen at least gives you a little buffer for a half hour, 45 yeah. minutes to get the appetite going. Then I roll the joint, then I go downstairs, I eat breakfast, and I roll that number, and I go back and take a little nappy noodle. I'm a buffer. Wake up, lift some weights, do some elliptical, and go do the two shows or whatever the fuck I got. It's nice and easy. Like a doctor. Nice and fucking easy. I don't step out of the routine. I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to see no monuments. <laughs> I don't want to see no theaters. I don't want to. Where's your restaurant? Oh, it's uh, 20 minutes away next time. <laughs> if I can't, what I thought, if man. I can't walk to it, I ain't going to it. Somebody Sometimes I go to kickboxing class or jiu-jitsu <coughs> school. If I, if I know the people and if they're close, I'll go to a jiu-jitsu school and do jiu-jitsu in, in, a, in a weird town or 
when I go to Columbus, when I go to Kansas City, I got a Muay Thai place where I go and kick the bag. I got like little homes. Besides that, I'm good to go, Jack. I do it nice and easy. If I could eliminate, like hopefully next year I could eliminate the road to once a month. <whistles> Two times a month is good enough for me right now. That's why I'm good. I'm happy. I I want to be there. I can ride. I can take pictures of people. Those two, three weeks in a row, I got too much on my plate. You know what I'm saying? To be it's, fucking gone. Yeah, like it's that. tough when you're on the road every weekend, and then you really, you literally have one day, maybe two, to do like meetings, podcasts, all that stuff, and then those days are just acting class. Acting uh, class. It's, class. So, it's too busy. And you have to ask yourself, it's too busy. how much do you need, and what is the. Uh, well, I'm deflecting meetings all the time. Like, like no, I'm, I'm from the law off. of diminishing returns. <coughs> At what point this doesn't make you more money and it just does this for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've seen comics come and go. We've seen comics die. And we've seen the effects of the road. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, it's like, uh, what's his name said? Uh, you know, uh, William Churchill, whatever. He said that, you know, going from, from thing to thing, is success. Success is from going from avenue to avenue with complete enthusiasm. These guys that go out every week, you can't be enthusiastic. Yeah. At one point, you lose the enthusiasm. So I know I got the podcast, I know I got the road, and I know I can act from time to time. I got to get an audition ready to play, play a Cuban guy. A bad fucking audition. I kick people. <laughs> I lose the fight. I break a chair over his head. But I like that. I don't think agents today have a plan for you. You, unless you open up your mouth, they have one plan to whore you out. Yeah, they're following everybody else. That's it. Trends, they're whoring yeah. you out. They're putting you on the road four weeks a month, and they think that's success. That's not success. That's You're being lazy. So since they don't do it, I do it. So between the podcast, the comedy, and my family, I'm going from area to area with success. I'm happy at home. I'm happy on the road. And I'm, you know. You just see what works. I'm no genius. I just see what works. I just see other people and what they're doing, and I see where it's taking them, and you go, I don't need to do that. It's kind of easy, and I'm having a good time. I'm getting a chance to raise my kid. You know, We've all seen comic kids at the, at the different clubs and what they look like. They look lost because they don't know who their parents are. You know, We live in a society now. Just because I live in the studio, so it doesn't mean I'm one of those people. I can't tell you how many times I take my daughter to swim class, and the chick is whiter than white, and I see her with a nanny. Where's your parents? Your parents can't even take you to a fucking swim class. What are the chances of that kid fucking joining the Marines? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you wonder why there's the problems we have. So fuck it. I'd rather be a dad. I go on the road, and I do the podcast, and I balance all three of them out. You do the best of what... When I was going on the road every week in 2015, my podcast numbers were horrible. When I took control, I started hitting over a million downloads. So my agent wasn't right. They weren't right. And the podcast is what gets the word out. This is what gets our word out. This is all we got. 20 years ago, you needed to be on TV. No more. No, no, no more. Not anymore, you know. We have a podcast. We can tell people what we really want, what we really feel. So fuck it. Fuck them, Felipe. Fuck them, fool. Fuck them in the ear. Fuck them in the other ear. Fuck them in the other ear. You know what I'm saying? What's up, fool? You know they got fucking a a lot of fucking parking meters down in fucking Florida. Yeah, the same fucking scam. (laughs) Open sesame. Open sesame. Backhands them. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's up with that fool from Narco who looks exactly like George Perez, though? <laughs> Which one, Rafa? Rafa. Oh, exactly. What's up, fool? Thank you very much to Joey Coco Diaz for being a wonderful guest Thank you and for a true you. friend forever and ever since day one, man. Thank you very much, man. We love you. I love you, man. Always. Lisa, thank you very much for making the plane ticket possible. Thank you. Rodrigo Torres, thank you for being the wheel, man. Oh, dude, thank you for fucking taking me along, dude. I love you guys. Stay black. <laughs> yeah, man.